Hi there. Now that we've made our stem and leaf blocks, it's time to make our first flower head block. First thing you're gonna do is cut all your pieces, double check and make sure you're cutting the right amount in the right size, and then we're going to make some half square triangles. You're gonna place, you're gonna draw lines on from corner to corner on the back of your background squares. Pair each background square with a red or pink square. Now your squares might be different colors. I'm just using the same colors that are in the pattern. Now I feel pretty confident in your ability to make half square triangles at this point, but we're just gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of this line and then cut on the line and press the pieces open. I'm gonna go sew them and then walk you through the next little part. Now I'll cut these apart, cut on the drawn line and press them open. Now that these are pressed, we're going to trim them to two inches square. You'll probably just need to take a little bit off of the edges and I'll walk you through how to do that. All right, I'm back with another ruler that has a 45 degree line running corner to corner. It doesn't have to run corner to corner, but it's nice if it ends in the corner. I'm going to, and I've moved a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. I place this 45 degree angle line on the seam line with the 45 degree angle on the line and these two sides being greater than two inches, greater or equal to two inches, I'm gonna go ahead and trim these edges with the rotary blade out. So, and it's just gonna be a little bit. And there's not a lot to trim off. It just helps the final units be nice and square and go together easily. So now we have the 45 degree angle on the seam line and these edges are at exactly two inches. And you know, it depends obviously which pattern you're using, what size you trim them to. All right. Now I've got a perfect little square, which is more square than this square. There is another specialty ruler. You can get um, a lock block, and these are not inexpensive. This is, I, you know, this was what I got for Christmas one year. So what it does is there's this little groove here that hooks on to this bump in the fabric. And so, okay, so I have it facing the wrong way. You want the corner. I always do it the wrong way. Okay, there we go. So I put this here and it catches and I have it pressed all the way up to that seam and it's over by, two. it's greater than the two inch mark. So I trim this. But then I can just rotate it like this and take it down to the two inch mark and do the final trim. This is great, especially, I wouldn't use it probably for, I wouldn't purchase it to make blocks like this where there's just a few half strip half square triangles, but if you are making a quilt with 600 half square triangles, it could save you a lot of time and make things a lot easier. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish trimming these up. All right, we've got all of our half square triangles made. And now we're going to make the center of the flower. 
We've cut the squares in half as directed. And we're going to sew these on to either side to opposite edges of the middle block. Now when you are getting ready to sew and pin, you're going to want to make sure that not just the edges are lined up, but that these little triangles on either side are equal. That's a good way to make sure that this point is in the middle of the block. You could also fold this in half, make a little crease, and double check that the point is on that crease. And the points here look good, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin this. All right, I'm gonna take these over to the sewing machine and sew along each side. We'll sew along both sides with a quarter inch seam. When you start sewing, just be careful of that little triangle. And your needle, like I keep on thinking that my needle will start and stop in this little groove here. It, it, it doesn't, so don't be worried if yours isn't either. I've gone ahead and sewn the pink triangles on and pressed towards the pink. Now you'll want to, it's not strictly necessary, but it's nice to trim off these little corners. And you'll notice that, again, the triangle overhangs by a little bit, so there's a little bit of triangle fabric right there. And that's how it's supposed to be. That will help everything line up. While I'm over at the sewing machine, I'm going to do a little bit more sewing. Um, it just helps me to not go back and forth between the sewing machine and iron. So we're going to need to sew, pair each of these pink and red squares and sew them together. Now, unless your fabric's directional, it doesn't matter which of these sides you sew it on. And these are gonna go together so quickly that I won't even pin them. They're small enough, they're not gonna go anywhere. And there's not a specific side I need to sew on. So I'll just line them all up and offset them a little bit like that so it'll be easy to pick up over at the sewing machine. And when I come back, I'll have these sewn and these sewn. The difference between sewing on your first set of triangles and the second is that the your sewing machine needle should line up right there in the notch. That notch should be a quarter inch from the edge. Sometimes you might have to fudge it, but that's the goal. So, yep, right there in the edge, and then sew across, and ideally, when you sew off, you'll be right in that crease too. It's hard to see, but so from here to here. And then when that opens up, it'll give you a nice quarter inch from the point of the yellow to the edge of the block. I'll go ahead and sew the rest of these and the squares into pairs. Now let's lay out all of these pieces. Let's start with the center. We'll just refer to our pattern right here. Um, ah, so cute. 
Again, I like to minimize how much I get up and down. So I'm going to pin all of these together and then take them all over to the sewing machine and sew them at once. So for example, I'm gonna take this half square triangle and pin it onto this end. And then I'll take this a triangle, making sure that it's still lined up the correct way and pin it on this side. Off to the sewing machine to sew these up. I've sewn and pressed the two patch units to the triangles and the center diamond. And now we just have to sew the final rows together. Again, lay it out, make sure that everything goes in the correct place. Turn around, beautiful. Now when you're pinning these, you're going to want to make sure that these seams butt up right against each other. The seam on the, all the seams are pressed towards the two patch and so the seam allowances will be going in opposite directions. And you can just rub your fingers and feel when they bump up next to each other. And if they've bumped up, we know that when we do that seam, when we sew our final seam, those corners will be lined up. And you just kind of wiggle it. And so you're, re instead of lining up the ends, and then making the middles fit, you're really, with this technique, butting up these seams in the middle, making sure those seams are correct. And then after those seams are matched up, then you'll go ahead and you can pin this edge and make sure it's lined up nice. Now these are such small pieces again that I don't think that's necessary. We can just kind of fiddle with it once we sit down at the sewing machine. And there are two little flower heads. I went ahead and set the seams, pressed open, sprayed them with a little bit of water, and really pressed in place with the iron. And now they're nice and flat and ready to be sewn onto our cute little stems. Now there's a video for the stems if you want to go back and refer to it, but here they are. Aren't they cute? I can't wait to make all of the rest of the flowers in this quilt. I think they're all adorable. And the next one's super, super simple too, which is great. All right, till next time. Bye.